three sources have confirmed to NBC News that Congressman Tom Emmer has dropped out of the speaker's race just hours after being nominated by his House Republican colleagues. And back with me now with the breaking news is NBC's Garrett. Hey, Garrett, what do you know? Well, Gabe, uh, a couple of minutes ago, you asked me how long Tom Emmer would stay in this race. Yeah. It looked like he didn't have the math, and the answer appears to be about four hours. Uh, that's about how long he was the speaker designee. The majority of that time spent in a, the Ways and Means committee room behind me just a few minutes ago. Emmer bolted out here with uh, some of his colleagues, didn't say a word to the cameras, and that's about the time we learned that he had disclosed in the room that he was going to be dropping out of the speaker's race. He no longer saw a path. And I think there was some acknowledgment that... Uh, that the Donald Trump uh, opposition to him was going to make this perhaps untenable. Some of the opposition that started the day sort of softly opposed that Tom Emmer was going to have a very difficult time backing out. And three sources familiar with his decision tell my colleagues, Ali Vitale, Rebecca Kaplan, the decision has been made. Emmer will be out. And I can tell you there's a physical sense of the scramble right now uh, to about what's going to happen next. Congressman, we're live on the air right now. What do you make of this news that Tom Emmer's apparently decided to drop out? Well, you know, I like Tom a lot. He's he's a nice guy, someone I get along with, but I couldn't support him for Speaker of the House. Um, uh, his voting record is what turned me. He had voted against President Trump's ban on transgenders in the military. He voted for the Democrats' gay marriage bill that opens up uh, churches and other places for lawsuits if they, if they use their faith and stand against it. He was for the national popular vote. Um, at one time, and that's that's not a movement I can support. Had you communicated to him that you you're, you couldn't change your opinion, you you sort of were locked in on opposing him? I, I opposed him openly in the conference um, uh, in our roll call vote, and that was that was simple enough for me. Uh, there was more conversations that went in went on in the conference, but um, he's dropped out now, and and I think this is good. Here's what's going on. The GOP conference is changing, and it's changing to reflect America first. Um, and Republican voters overwhelmingly support President Trump, and the GOP conference and the Speaker of the House uh, should do the same. But if Jim, Jordan, if Jim Jordan was the America first candidate, he couldn't come any closer than Tom Emmer's come. What happens now? How do you get anybody from any faction of this conference to 217 votes? Well, that's what we're going to have to do. You know, in 1855, it took two months and 133 ballots uh, to elect a Speaker of the House. I don't want to go through that. I don't think the country should have to go through with it. But I think Congress needs to learn a lesson. The House of Representatives has not worked for the people in a long time. Um, and I think Congress needs to learn to do a better job. Our debt is atrocious. The border is unbelievable. Uh, we've got terrorists coming in our country. And the president is leading us uh, to World War III. Do you worry at all that every time a Republican candidate gets rejected because they can't get the Republican votes, you move closer to a candidate who gets elected with Democratic support? That the frustration just builds to the point where people do start working across the aisle on this issue? You know, I think that's a good question, and that's the threat that's constantly brought up. But every single Republican in the conference is elected by Republican voters. They may be in a Biden district, but they're still largely uh, elected with Republican voters, and they're supported by donations uh, with Republican donors and the NRCC. I think it would be a complete fool's errand for any Republican in our conference to join with Democrats to elect a speaker. How, how much did Emmer's vote to certify the 2020 election have to do with the opposition against him? Well, it played a big role for me. I voted to object, um, and, and I don't think uh, that that was a fair election. I think there was a lot of election fraud. And you want to know something? It's okay to say that. No one's speech should be canceled. No one should be prosecuted. President Trump shouldn't be prosecuted. And I couldn't support a Speaker of the House that didn't but object. But why does it have to be a proxy? What do you mean? I mean, why does that have to be the defining reason why you would That wasn't the defining reason. There were many reasons. He also voted against President Trump's transgender ban in the military, and I don't support that. And I'm largely against, and I'm trying to stop and make it a felony to perform transgender surgeries on children. It's a serious issue. The Speaker of the House needs to reflect the views um, and the will of Republican voters. But at this point, Republican we're voters, years Republican. In, shouldn't you admit that the 2020 election was okay. not stolen? Oh, get over it. Guess what? I think it was stolen, and I can say that all day long. What, what, role, do think, what role do you think Trump played? What role do you think Trump played? Well, uh, 
Gabe, I don't know if you're still with us, but I think that was uh, illuminating in a lot of ways. I mean, I think, you know, the Congresswoman's complaints here were echoed by some of these other members here. I think, you know, she represents one faction of this uh, party. And you heard her say that she thinks the party is changing. And I don't think anyone in any faction would dispute that. Uh, it's a cause of much consternation within the Republican Party about what direction they're going and who should lead them. And now for going on three weeks, we have no answer to that question. And frankly, I'm not sure we're any closer to finding one tonight. You know, Garrett, a few minutes ago, I had asked you, does the GOP have a backup plan at this point? It's clear from your conversation with Marjorie Taylor Greene that they do not. And she brought up, what, in the 1800s, the speakers erased 133 oh, yeah. ballots. <laughs> uh, you know, how, how reassuring is that? Where do you see this going from here? Well, look, I think there's a couple of backstops here that are going to force this issue, and probably the most important one is government funding. The thing that I was going to ask the Congresswoman if I had one more question was, this all started with a CR, right, a continuing resolution to fund the government for a short period of time that Kevin McCarthy supported. It was the straw that broke the back of, you know, his support in the conference. It was enough to push those eight members over the edge. Every day we get closer to the government funding deadline coming up in mid-November makes another longer-term version of exactly Exactly that kind of legislation more likely. And I think that's the kind of thing that ultimately somebody's going to have to force across the finish line. It's going to be an ugly job. It's going to be a job no Republican's going to want. But every day they waste not working on appropriations bills or negotiating with Democrats is a day that makes it more likely they're going to have to take a bill they hate and pass it to keep the lights on or to turn them back on after a shutdown. And honestly, uh, Gabe, I think that may be the only mechanism to force this group to pick a leader, because in that moment, somebody's going to have to pass something on the House floor. So, Garrett, in the end, was Trump knifing Emmer essentially the nail in the coffin here? <laughs> I think it was. I mean, look, I think Tom Emmer was going to have a very difficult path, as would anyone else. Before that, the, the threat of, of a Trump uh, opposition out there was already quite damaging to him. But the, the, the vocal, specific opposition and call not to support him, I think, really kind of kind of slammed the door on anybody changing their mind to be pro Emmer, despite his best work to the contrary. All right. Garrett, Garrett Hake, our senior Capitol Hill correspondent, thank you so much for leading us through that breaking news and getting us through that scramble there on Capitol Hill. Garrett, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.